Hey everyone, welcome back to Code Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create a HUD using the Ninja Combat System by Ninja Bear Studios. In this tutorial, we're going to be using the Interface Fantasy Warrior HUD by Cinti Studios. If you want to support my channel, feel free to use my affiliate link in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. So Cinti has all these beautiful looking HUDs already pre-made for us, and it goes with the Cinti theme since I'm using Cinti assets in my Ninja Bear Studio project. So for this one, I'm going to create an HP and mana bar that's going to update with the gameplay tags. Uh, or the attribute set that I already imported with Ninja Bears and set up gas. So let's just jump into it and set up UI. It is very easy. And then I'll also add a little debug thing at the end to show that it does indeed update and work just fine. So what I'm going to do is actually just head over to my content folder. Let me first uh, scale my UI a bit so it's easier for you guys to see. Maybe I'll do like 1.25 and a little bit of a chunkier view so that we can see this. And the first thing I'm going to do is Let's actually just go ahead and go to, uh, I have an inventory folder, but I didn't make a UI folder. So I'm going to create a new folder, just call this UI, get into this. And now I want to right click, go to blueprint class, and I want to look for the Ninja Combat Base Widget. And what this is going to do for us is basically just allow us to manipulate our UI data, HP, mana, stamina, and all that good stuff. And I'll go ahead and call this WBP underscore stats, double click to open this up. And now I'll maximize this so it's easy for us to see. And now over here in my library, I'm just going to add a size box, just drag this down. And I also want to go ahead and add a vertical box and I'll drag this into my size box. And then I want to add the HUD fantasy warrior health stats. Oh, three. It's going to look like this giant diamond with a 99 in it. Just go ahead and drag that in. And then, uh, what I want to do is go ahead and click on this and kind of align it a bit better. So I'm going to do all the way to the left all the way uh, bottom. I'll leave the padding as zero, like so. Actually, I wanna to go to my vertical box and do the same thing. So left, bottom, and then the padding, I'll do 200 from the left and 200 from the bottom. So Cinti assets are meant to be made with 4K, so this is gonna look absolutely insane uh, on my screen. So let's actually go ahead and fix that first. If you are not using Cinti assets and you're using your own, you can skip to the timestamp below or you can skip to the timestamp uh, shown in the video. So if you are using Cinti assets, what we're going to do is go over to edit project settings and then we're going to scroll down until we see we're going to scroll down under engine until we see user interface. Under user interface, I'm going to change the DPI scale rule to scale to fit like so. And then under the scale to fit rule down here, I'm going to open this drop down and have the design screen size to be 4k. So it's 3840 by 2160. Just like that, I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this. And now you'll see that because we did that, now you'll see my UI kind of scaled down. So if you paid attention before, it was going halfway through my screen and it does look really HD either way, but I just don't want it to cover my entire screen. And now from here, I'm going to select on my HUD Fantasy Warrior Health Stats 03 blueprint that Cinti has already provided. So I'm going to go over to my view models tab. If you don't see view models and view bindings, head over to windows, make sure view models and view bindings are both checked because we will be utilizing both. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this add view model button to go ahead and add the Ninja combat view model. I'm actually going to click on this drop down because in this tutorial, I only need combat vitals for this specific UI. So I'll go ahead and select combat vitals and then click select. And now I'll click the top part of this. And I just want to change this creation type from manual to create instance like so. And then I want to go over to my view bindings. Now I'm going to click on HUD Fantasy Warrior Health Stats 03, just so that I can go ahead and add it here. And I don't have to manually just uh, search for it using this drop down. And then I just want to select these bars individually. Using the view models makes this very easy. So I'm going to click on this pencil icon. And now you'll see all the little child nestings that are under this blueprint. So we have the HP bar. I'm going to go ahead and select the HP bar and then select the progress bar and then click on the drop down again, scroll down until we see percent. And because I imported the attributes from that JSON file using the Ninja gas, when I imported that, it already came with an attribute for us to tie it to our health percent. So I'm gonna scroll down under combat vitals and look for health percent like so. And now I'm basically just gonna do the same thing for our mana. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign, click on the pencil icon. Now we have this MP bar already configured by us by Cinti. Then I'll click on the drop down and look for the progress bar, 
click on the drop down again, look for percent, click select. And then on the right side, we'll click on the pencil icon, click the root where it says view model combat vitals and look for magic percent and hit select. I'll go ahead and hit compile and save from here. Now, the only thing I have left to do is go to my graph and I just want to create a bind to ability system as soon as we do the event construct, basically as soon as the game starts. So I'm going to drag out the view model combat vitals over here, click get, and then look for the bind to ability system like so and make sure the arrow of make sure to pin the event construct into this and the combat actor will be the get player controller like so. So let's go ahead and hit compile and save. And now I just want to go to my BP HUD that we created earlier in order to open and close our inventory. So I'll go ahead and click on this magnifying glass to find it, double click BP HUD and open this up. So I'm not going to be modifying anything here because this is just handling inventory stuff. I'll just go ahead and uh, move this down a bit. And then from event begin play, what I want to do is drag out the player owner and look for a bind event on possessed pawn change like so. And let me just um, duplicate this over here just so it looks a bit more organized. And basically I'm just gonna connect this like so, look for the target like so, and this looks pretty good. And what I wanna do from here is actually go ahead and create a custom event. And this will be called init stats to initialize my stats. In order for us to initialize the stats, first I wanna check if we have a valid new pawn. So I'm gonna look for an is valid node to make sure that there is something that we can initialize properly and connect the new pawn over to the input object. And pretty much if it is valid, then we're gonna go ahead and create the widget. So I'll go ahead and look for create widget and the class will be the WBP underscore stats that we just created like so. And the owning player of this create widget is gonna be the player owner. And now from the return value of this create widget, I'm just gonna drag out, drag this out and look for set combat actor. And then the new combat actor will actually be plugged into this new pawn over here, like so. Let me go ahead and double click this line over here and over here just to make it a little more readable so we know where the lines are going. What is wrong with me? Okay, perfect, just like so. So hopefully this is a little more readable. And then I just wanna finally add this to the viewport. Let me go ahead and drag it from the create WBP. Let's go ahead and add to viewport like so. And this looks, and hopefully this is pretty readable. And then now we can continue on from our event begin play. So now with these connected, basically what we're doing is first, we're gonna be checking if there is a new pawn that has spawned into the game, or for example, if you've loaded into the game, then we're gonna go ahead and create the stats based on the player owner. And then we're gonna set the combat actor, which is us again, and we're gonna add it to our viewport so we can see our stats. But now we need to initialize the stats and update the tags set in our attributes. From our bind event on possess change, I'm gonna drag out this player owner and look for the get controlled pawn. And now I wanna add another is valid node just to make sure we don't crash doing this and make sure we have a controlled, a pawn that is controlled. And if we have a pawn that's controlled, then we can go ahead and start initializing these stats. So I'll call the init stats function that we created here. So basically as soon as we can check that we are in fact owning a character and it is valid, then we will run this function to add our stats onto our screen. So from here, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect the controlled pawn over to new pawn like so. Go ahead and hit compile and save. And now when I go to the demo and actually try this out, I will see my HP and mana because those are the only two I updated. Go to max, even though in my widget blueprint, they are not set to max. So you can see that they are updating properly. But let's actually go ahead and uh, create a debug gameplay effect that's just gonna apply to ourselves. And we'll just subtract our health by 10 each time we go ahead and click on it. So I'm just gonna go into my, um, I'll just go into my combat folder, right click, go to blueprint class, look for gameplay effect, click on the top one, click select GE underscore debug damage. And then I'll go ahead and open this up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a modifier, open this index and look for my health attribute. So it's gonna be my ninja comp my ninja combat attribute set dot health. I'm gonna click add as the base and the modifier magnitude scalable float will be negative 10, like so. And then I'll go ahead and hit compile and save. 
And now I'm going to go over to my BP player third person controller where my ninja gas ability system is. I'm going to drag this out and then I'll drag out of this and look for the apply gameplay effect to self. And now I'll look for a debug key J so that for, or you can do whatever key you want. When I go ahead and apply this, when I go ahead and play this, I'm going to actually just print a string that says HP minus 10 or yeah. And then go ahead and select that gameplay effect class. So I named it GE underscore debug jam damage, and I'll just do level one hit compile and save. And now when I go back and hit uh, J on my keyboard, you can see my HP is decreasing by 10 each time I click it. And right now, if I died, nothing happens because I haven't uh, set that up yet, but that's pretty much how you configure uh, adding UI elements over to Ninja Combat. Thanks for watching, Code of the Road, like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.